May the Lord bless you with courage and endurance in these challenging times. Amen. Dear heart dwellers, I'm so glad we have each other to share these things with. I'm not glad that they're happening, but at least we're not alone in this. We have a community of souls that really care and are prayer warriors. And I want to share with you eight supernatural signs that happened within the last two to three days that point to a false flag event with a nuclear bomb in New York City. The first one I want to share with you one of our novices was sitting before the Eucharist in adoration. And suddenly, a black horse jumped out of the host, and someone was riding it, carrying something high in the air, which she thought was a sickle. But she didn't look real closely because it shocked her. And then the horse turned. The man turned a horse and went back into the Eucharist, and it was gone. Just as quickly as it had charged out, he turned and charged back in. Now, we thought the black horse, well, that's in Revelation. So I looked it up, and Revelation 6, verse 5, When he broke open the third seal, I heard the third living creature cry out, Come forward. I looked, and there was a black horse, and its rider held a scale in his hand. I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures. The voice said, A ration of wheat costs a day's pay. That's two pounds of wheat costs a day's pay. And three, ration, <clears throat> and three rations of barley which is six pounds, costs a day's pay. But do not damage the olive oil or the wine. Well, that, that was taking it from Revelation, the black horse from Revelation. And when I asked the sister what the man was holding up in the air, she thought it might be a sickle. But she said, to be honest with you, I didn't really look very closely. I was so startled. So it probably was a scale, and she just didn't see it and just assumed it was a sickle. Now, I want to um, just mention that as a disclaimer so we understand. You know, sometimes we don't always get it right when we have a vision, especially if we're startled. And it was very quick. The horse came out of the Eucharist with the man on it and holding something high in the air and then turned around and went back. Okay, so that was the first supernatural event. Then the second is a dream of New York City that Ezekiel had with the shelves being stripped bare. The same day that she had this vision, Ezekiel had a dream that he was in New York City in a high-end market-styled grocery store that movie stars, models, and other celebrities were shopping in, but frantically. Quickly, the shelves in every market booth were stripped, except for one small gourmet chocolate shop that had two truffles left. Ezekiel bought them both, but when he put the money on the counter, the man was so distraught that he had just waved him on. The entire market at that point was stripped bare of every grocery item and totally deserted. And that was in New York City. Now the third thing. Mother Mary Elijah received a rhema for the, from the Lord to consecrate a fast. The Lord is calling us to consecrate days of fasting and prayer again, now for our nation and specifically New York City. I had pulled a rhema the day before, Proverbs 14.32. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But even in death, the righteous seek refuge in God. And at the bottom it said, pray against a national event. Number four. Then there was a dream that Mother Elijah had the following night, where I saw a team of SWAT officers in some building 
coming towards a wall. They had guns loaded and pointed, and they began shooting at the wall. And I could see inside the wall were also men, six or seven of them, also in SWAT uniforms, shooting back at them. The wall crumbled, revealing the men they were fighting against, and those inside the wall died. All fell to the ground. Then the scene changed to a man in a SWAT uniform with his face uncovered, being escorted by the police. He was white with blonde brownish hair and a smirk on his face and was being led down some steps by the good guys, the White Hats. He was the ringleader that had planted a bomb along with six or seven other people he had used as puppets to do the dirty work. Those were the ones who died. I felt as though the bomb did go off, but it didn't do nearly as much damage as they intended because they were captured. I just found it weird that they were all wearing the same uniforms, yet fighting against each other. I could only tell who the bad guys were in the dream by the knowing of the Holy Spirit who gave me understanding. Okay, item number five said uh, she received several ramas after this, um, confirming this vision. Jeremiah 36, Baruch, the scribe of Jeremiah, and consecrate a fast for the repentance of the nation and declare my word. Interesting. Immediately I knew it was about the dream, she said. It was from the Lord, and I knew it was very serious. After she had finished that, the Lord began to speak to her, and he said, Now concerning the state of your nation, it is so very bleak, so very bleak, beloved. That is a portion of what Father Ezekiel and the community sufferings have been for. I desire to adhere to my people's request and forestall World War III, but it looks so very dark, beloved. We are in need of more prayers and fast offerings. The intel you have received concerning New York is accurate. That is the city, or should I say the stage, they will use to incite an attack and start World War III. The dream I gave you was to confirm the false flag that they have now planned. Do not be mistaken. New York City is slated for destruction. That is a pronounced judgment that cannot be changed, but the timing can. What they intend to do is to cause a bomb to go off and blame it on their enemies. But the enemy is within. Hence, in the dream, both sides had on, the same, had on the same uniforms, yet playing against each other and even killing one another, sacrificing a few to gain power and control over the whole world. My beloved brides, Satan and his servants are impatient and are anticipating their long-awaited reign, so they will do anything before the appointed time to incite war. Please, I need you yet again to pray like you never have before, so this is mitigated and the culprits planning this would be caught instead. The Lord continued, America is in the throes of a thin line between life of this nation and death of this nation. I need my people who are called by my name to pray, consecrate a fast, and repent for the sins of this nation the sins of my church, and personal sins as well. Cry out on behalf of those who are still promoting abortion, sexual immorality, pedophilia, sex trafficking, corruption, bribery, and money laundering. Cry out to me for the sins of the church, of gossip, jealousy, coveting, posturing, favoritism, love of money, and love of the world and so much more. Cry out to me in repentance for your own sins. Ask me to expose the hidden secrets, motivations, and actions of your heart 
that grieve me, and I will show you. Get your children to pray alongside you and ask for mercy for your family, yourselves, and this nation. You are in a pivotal hour, and so much can change if my people would repent and pray. You have been given authority over your governments and have been commissioned to pray for them. And she quoted First Timothy chapter 2, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet life, a peaceable life, and all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Your prayers change things, and so much has been delayed because of them, Jesus continued. My desire is to minimize this planned attack so it doesn't incite World War III, but rather exposes the wickedness of your government and the truth of the staged attack. Pray for many to awaken so they don't fall for it, like so many did with 9-11, which was plotted and executed by your very own president and leaders in the nation. The wickedness of men and the cry of the little ones have come up to the Father's nostrils to bring judgment upon your land. But I stand at his right side to intercede on your behalf. My brides intercede with me seriously and fervently. And right now I just have to ask the Lord, please, Lord, give us that fervency in intercession. Please help us to be fervent. Number seven, today during prayer when Ezekiel was suffering the passion, one of our novices who is very connected saw that a nuclear bomb hit New York City while some men were in a meeting, one of them being angry, thumping his fist against the table. But suddenly the flash hit them in their offices and they were incinerated. In the next scene, Putin and his associates were scratching their heads, not understanding what had just happened because it was not them or Iran that had done this. Then as she was praying in a basement bunker, it seemed the nuclear warheads were being raised into position with red lights flashing. This was in the United States. When the power went off and the doors jammed in an open position with one of the warheads protruding slightly out of the ground, the power came back on and the silos again were lifting the bomb with flashing red lights, etc. And she prayed harder, Oh no, no, please God, no. Then it stopped. The electricity went off again, and men in white lab coats were running around trying to figure out why it had failed. In the meantime, the Blessed Mother was present there and told her, They can't hear you when you ask them to stop. But then the Lord spoke out loud to her. He said, I am holding it back, or it's being held back. Number eight, the song that the Lord gave me in the storm, which is about nuclear war and the rapture happening almost simultaneously, began to play without anyone touching the computer and turning it on. We were in the back room with Ezekiel. He was suffering the Lord's passion really heavily. And we were all crying in the back room. And then the song started playing in the front room with no intervention at all. And it's the storm in the storm is all about how America is hit with the nuclear bombs and how the Lord takes his church but he also encourages those left behind what to do. It's on BitChute, Still Small Voice, our channel, and it'll be on the right-hand side because it's the most popular uh, video we have. 
and we were all praying the rosary at the time of this vision. Interestingly, the Jesuits in Japan were saved while close to ground zero because they were praying the rosary. And a woman in a nearby library was reading about the Blessed Mother. She was protected. Everything around her was incinerated, except the book she was read reading, the chair she was sitting on and herself. And none of these people ever came down with radiation sickness. Um, and that's a fact. So anyway, dear heart dwellers, we are still in the midst of fasting. Some are fasting on water and rice. Others are doing what they can. And this is uh, until Monday. The Lord has asked for a seven-day fast, which will end uh, this coming Monday. So if you want to join in with a few days of fasting or just anything that you want to offer Him, please do join in with us. And if you have any visions or any dreams about the situation in New York, please uh, let us know about them. I'd like to see what they say. The Lord bless you, dear heart dwellers. Let's pray really hard for our nation. Mother Claire has asked me to add that if there's anyone who lives in New York City, we strongly encourage you to get out of the city, move, or stay away, at least for the next following week. Visit family members, relatives, elsewhere, so you're not caught in the midst of this event when it happens. If you know any other heart dwellers who live in New York City, please share this message with them and tell them to get out. We are praying for you all. God bless you, family. Let's stay alert and keep watch.